Coming up, I'm going to be talking about Disney's dispute with DirecTV, but before we go any further, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. Hi everyone, it's Roger here from what's on at DisneyPlus.com. It's time for a quick Disney Plus news roundup, and today we're going to be talking about some major news that broke overnight, which is that Disney and DirecTV have now gone into blackout mode because now you can no longer watch Disney channels on DirecTV. That includes Disney Channel, Nat Geo, you've also got FX, and obviously the big one, ESPN. Now this negotiations do signed a five year deal back in 2019. It expired yesterday and in the middle of one of the matches of the US Open it just went blank and that is a screen basically telling you that there's a dispute going on. Now this has been a very difficult and tricky situation so let's kind of break it down. So the major thing right now is um, both companies are both sort of slinging mud at each other telling all their customers that it's the other person's fault. Nothing that they do, it's all the, the other person's fault. So let's break down what the issues are right now. So obviously, cable TV is in a massive problem. They are losing subscribers each and every month. The viewership numbers are dropping. And companies like DirecTV are trying their best to try and keep people locked in. They're trying to keep people coming back. And that's what they want to do. And the way that they want to do this is they want to start offering a much more slimmed down cable package where you can get less channels. And more importantly, maybe you just get the sports stuff or you just get the entertainment things because they know that people don't like paying this a huge amount of money for all the cable channels. Now, it's kind of unique with the US because they've kind of had this system where you had to have all the channels or none of the channels. Here in the UK, it always worked a little bit different. We always had the different bundles. If you wanted the entertainment package, the sports package, or the movie package, you could do what you wanted and have a combination of the three. So it's always been like that here in the UK. So it's kind of a bit weird, really. Um, but the US, they've never done that. So therefore, unsurprisingly, they don't want to change it too much. But they know that the industry is changing. Disney wants to keep that thing rolling. They want to keep getting that money. And they've stated that they view that um, they offered DirecTV some different options. Um, for example, last year with Spectrum TV, they offered Disney Plus with ads included in the bundle in exchange for some of the channels closing down. Um, that apparently has been offered as well. There's even reports that maybe they've even been offered the option of doing a sports only package. Similar to what happened with Venue Sports. But Venue Sports is a whole other issue that we need to get in on. But, so the general gist of it is... Um, Disney wants either the same bundle or the same deal with maybe some more money and DirecTV wants a completely new package, different pricing structure and everything and they can't agree on a price. Now DirecTV over the weekend has been kind of like throwing shade at Disney kind of saying well it's, you know they put it out in the public and you know they they're unwilling to negotiate and also the other way around Disney's been like they're not willing to negotiate with us. Now no doubt, either side, you know, people are going to be on either side. There's very much a case of the anti-Disney thing. No matter what they do, they're at fault. And then you've got the anti-DirecTV people that are like, screw you guys, I'm off the YouTube TV. You know, then that's kind of the way it goes. And I think this is the big issue is, obviously with cable, there's like, if you're watching these channels, you're paying for them, and now you don't have access to it. So you're going to be a customer, you're going to be pissed off. But the ultimate thing is, is you can just go, okay, you know, message them, email them, whatever it is, cancel it. And you can fire up YouTube TV and then you can start watching the TV shows. You can get um, Fubo, you can get Hulu Live TV. You can get access to those channels very, very quickly within minutes by signing up to another service. And this is the big problem for DirecTV is they need to adapt, they need to change because they know cable TV is a dying industry. But I do think Disney are also trying to take advantage of the situation, just trying to get as much money out of it before it completely goes. They're also using the fact that it's the start of the NFL season, so there's more pressure. Audience are even more likely to make a big move now. And the simple truth is, is that once those people leave DirecTV because of this situation, they're probably never coming back. Now, Disney has put out a statement saying that DirecTV chose to deny millions of subscribers access to their content just as we head into the final week of the US Open and gear up for the college football and the opening of the NFL season. While we are open to offering DirecTV flexibility in terms of what we've extended to other distributors, we will not enter into an agreement that will undervalue our portfolio of television channels and programs we invest significantly to deliver the number one brands in entertainment, news, and sports because that's what our viewers expect and deserve. We urge DirecTV to do what's the best interest of their customers and finalize a deal that would immediately restore our programming. Meanwhile, DirecTV has also put out a statement. Now, this was a little bit longer, but I'm just going to bring out some of the key bits. The head of DirecTV went on to say that the Walt Disney Company is once again refusing any accountability to customers, distribution partners, and now the American judicial system. 
Disney is in the business of creating alternative realities, but this is a real world where we believe you earn your way and must answer to your own actions. They want to continue to chase maximum profits and dominant control at the expense of consumers, making it harder for them to select the shows and sports that they want at a reasonable price. He went on to say, customer frustration is at an all time high as Disney shifts its best producers, most innovative shows, top teams, conferences, and entire leagues to their direct to consumer services while making customers pay more than once for the same programming on multiple different Disney platforms platforms and Disney's only magic is forcing prices to go up while simultaneously making its content disappear. Now he also um, called out the fact that Disney are closing down its apps like Disney Now and ABC and you know giving less value to their customers. Now obviously Disney have countered with that going well we're going to give you access to Disney Plus with ads so that's their kind of way of getting around that one which I do think makes sense from a business point of view. Um, but again DirecTV is you know, they're putting out this kind of idea that Disney's all at fault and, you know, this, you know, and they're trying to get out of it. The simple truth is, is DirecTV is trying to keep its customers and they want to survive. They, it, we're in a bit of a catch-22. They're both playing chicken of who needs each. The simple truth is, Disney doesn't need DirecTV. They can, all their content can go somewhere else and especially... Once the launch of ESPN flagship starts next summer, where all of the ESPN content will be available on the ESPN app and within Disney Plus, and you're gonna be able to go completely around cable. And this is the big problem. Direct to consumer basically goes around the cable customers. They don't need them. And this is, obviously Disney's gonna to want to have those 10 plus million subscribers. But let's say a few million of them quit Direct TV and go to YouTube or Hulu, this, Disney still get their money. That's the, the truth of it. And this time next year with the launch of the ESPN thing, they are essentially at this point where these cable companies, they're no longer as important as they once were. And they've kind of lost that leverage of, you know, the, the, essentially Disney's in a much more powerful situation of, yes, they want that money from DirecTV and they're established from it, but they don't need it in the same way that DirecTV needs it because simple truth is is that if they don't have those networks and especially ESPN, so many of their customers are gonna bail. Um, they want a, a sl slim dying uh, system and I think we're definitely at a point now where you know we, we probably are gonna need it and I do think that Disney opened up Pandora's box with this whole venue sports situation. So how that worked is they obviously gonna launch venue sports which was gonna combine with Warner Brothers Discovery Fox offer all their like linear channels through streaming for about 43 bucks a month. It was supposed to launch last month. Obviously, Fubo didn't like it, they took it to court and they won a temporary injunction. It's going to go to court probably in February next year, it's blocking the launch of it. And they said it was uncompetitive, antitrust laws. This is where DirecTV has kind of come in uh, talking about how all of this stuff that's come from it and they're trying to pee back the power off of there. I'm not sure if it's going to work because ultimately, as I said, um, Disney might need that money and whether or not they come to an agreement, that's going to be the big thing. Who's going to blink first? Does, is DirecTV going to be losing enough customers that they start going, look, we need this. We're going to have to make some kind of deal. Is Disney going to be like, we want that, you know, 10 plus million every single month plus, you know, we want that. So we're going to try and get that coming in. It is a very tricky situation. Um, again, this whole thing with venue sports has really opened it up. Disney might be like, look, we will offer you an ESPN bundle and you know, we'll offer you, you know, an entertainment bundle kind of thing, or I don't know how they're going to do it, but they're going to want to offer everything on a la carte. And the simple truth is, I don't think they can do everything on a la carte. I mean, who's going to sit there and go, yeah, can you add a dollar to my subscription or 50 cents for free form that geo, but I don't want that geo wild. That just is going to be a lot of admin a lot of uh, things and also those channels are probably not going to have enough subscribers and viewers to make it warrant. I do think those channels on a whole, if they don't return to DirecTV, those channels are very much days numbered anyway, some of those ones that got removed from Spectrum, I think, you know, the little smaller channels, Freeform, Nat Geo Wild, etc. I don't think they're going to be long for the world if they don't get, and I think they're going to be gone either way. Even if there's a new deal, those channels probably aren't going to come back. And if there is a new deal, I, I just can't see some of these channels existing because we're in a world where things are different. Um, all the focus really is on ESPN. But there is there is some argument that obviously DirecTV is right in the fact that Disney's been refocusing all of its efforts on streaming, moving its content there, moving its best stuff there, and cable customers are kind of getting sort of a 
worst case scenario. We're also getting that kind of weird thing where so much of streaming is still controlled by this cable system of next day episodes exist because cable had the right to get them first. You know, and I think, you know, uh, the existence of Disney now, all of this is because of the cable system. It's all falling to pieces and they're all fighting for scraps to try and keep it going. The simple truth is, is DirecTV is a cable company that, um, you know, they need customers and they need content. Disney has the content, they're in a much more upper hand. And the simple truth is, is you can go around um, these cable companies and get it from other places. And that does change the dynamic. Um, Disney does, isn't gonna undersell its stuff. You know, and there is that argument of Disney is spending billions of dollars buying sports rights and creating all these shows and DirecTV, to, you know, uses that content to try and make some money off of it. Direct to consumer takes out the middleman and DirecTV is the middleman. And I think we are going to see more cable companies having this issue, more changes. There is, and I don't think there is a simple thing of both companies, yeah, both companies have been accused, you know, of corporate greed and all the rest of it. That's what they're there for. They're the, companies are there to make money. They're not there to be a friend. They're not there to be um, charitable services. Or These are there to make money. And they are negotiating to try and do it. They're, they're both trying to play the PR game to try and get it to spin. Some people will obviously will pick DirecTV's side because anything Disney they do, some people will just be like, they're in the wrong. No matter what Disney does, it's in the wrong. DirecTV trying to use this Fubo things of trying to get around. They want to completely restructure cable. The simple truth is Disney in itself is not going to be the only reason for it. You know, you're going to have the other companies as well. But cable TV is less and less important. There are less subscribers to cable TV today than there was yesterday. And there'll be less tomorrow. There'll probably be even less direct TV customers tomorrow. There is going to be this that's just continuing to decline as they're going to go around it. That we are going to get to a point where you know, you're going to be able to get access to ESPN and all these channels and stuff, and you're not going to need these cable companies. And they are, and I think that bit gets a little bit thing of DirecTV's throwing all this, you know, this mud away, but they are fighting to keep this content because they know if they don't get it, they're going to be gone. And DirecTV has already been spun off into another company. This could be a way of kind of doing stuff. I don't know. Some cable companies are closing down because they just can't, can't afford to run anymore. But I do think we're at a point where this is going to have a major implication on the future of cable television. It could speed up the decline or it could stretch it out longer if they do all these smaller bundles. It's going to be interesting to see what happens over the coming week. Now, the big NFL game obviously is going to be a big thing for them to get it sorted. I'm not expecting a result um, probably the early part of this week. They might go. It could go longer. They might never come to an agreement. That's the key thing with these blackouts. You know, there always was that thing of... Well, eventually they do it. DirecTV has been in a dispute with Fox. Those channels have never come back over a year plus later. Warner Brothers Discovery has been in a dispute with Fubo TV. Those channels never came back. The simple truth is they don't need them anymore. You're no longer, the days of when you were locked into cable and if they'd lost the access to it, you had no other way of getting access to it because they were the only cable company in your street and you couldn't move and you had to do it. And so therefore the cable companies had these entertainment companies like Disney, they had them hold and they could be like, you, well, we, we need it. Now we can go around them. And yeah, it's a very, very, very different situation. Um, I wouldn't like to say which way it's gonna go, but it's gonna be very, very interesting to see what happens with the situation. Let me know your comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Um, which, which, you know, I always think it's a kind of weird thing about who do you agree with? And I think there's, you could agree with both and you can disagree with both. Ultimately, you know, people are going to be like, you know, the, the consumer is the only one that is, is going to be losing out, especially customers that are paid for it. And this is the other thing is if they aren't getting, if they are paying for it and they haven't got access to it, they're going to get a refund. Are they going to get their packages reduced in price? Mm. You know, they, it can go both ways. So that it's going to be interesting to see how all this comes together. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. And obviously, if there's any major updates, I will be doing it on this video. But also, more importantly, on the website, any news as I get it, it will be up there straight away. But on that note, guys, thank you very much. See you guys soon. Laters.